Having uh, paid my homage to Shakyamuni Buddha, a historical teacher, I would like to remind uh, all of ourselves uh, to take a moment and cultivate uh, the highest uh, level of motivation. We call it uh, bodhicitta motivation or the altruistic motivation, seeking complete enlightenment for the benefit of all other sentient beings. And with that kind of uh, bodhicitta motivation, uh, we should participate uh, in this uh, Lamrim teaching, the great treatise on the stages of path enlightenment uh, that uh, brings together all the essential points of practice uh, leading to uh, complete enlightenment. And we are back to volume number three in the English translation, which means uh, we uh, we will deal with uh, uh, special insight, uh, uh, you know, uh, a section. What I think I'm going to get you to be sure to come here at this. I need a lambing, how don't you move? How don't you move? I need my industry. Gajam into chop chum at the chop chow at the time. I took the Gajam Ranu Gajam into cut the tape. Name I on the wallet. Any that in the so we are um, back to uh, the Lamrim uh, Chemo section on uh, cultivating a special insight or vipassana, Pakhtun Chemo in Tibetan. And uh, as you may recall, that we laid out a couple of uh, key outlines uh, some time ago, uh, which have to deal with uh, identifying objects of negation or what needs to be negated or refuted in order to establish uh, the ultimate uh, reality and to, to um, access it. And uh, so we have uh, talked about uh, two key subpoints. Uh, one is uh, uh, this that uh, if the uh, negating too much, you know, it's the overestimation where if you negate it too much, again, we will miss the point and we will not be able to identify precisely what needs to be refuted or negated. The other point is not negating enough which is the underestimation that again, if you don't negate enough, well, we still would miss the point. Yeah, so it has to be really precise uh, in terms of uh, uh, identifying what needs to be negated or refuted. We call gakja. And um, um, so we uh, have also tried to establish uh, how it is uh, you know, uh, defined or uh, recognized in one's own system of thought, what is object of negation according to our own system. Uh, and uh, relating to that, uh, so we have started to talk about, uh, if you will, uh, unique perspective on understanding uh, afflictive emotions or delusions. 
So we are on page uh, 208 uh, uh, of volume number three in English translation. And uh, the second uh, paragraph from the bottom up, uh, the big par paragraph, if you will, somewhere in the middle uh, where it reads, this is the superimposition of self. There are two types, the superimposition of an objective self and the superimposition of a personal self and so on. And now Kim Sadamisi has given his commentary on explanation on the, uh, those uh, uh, lines. Um, 
So we have talked about this uh, quite a bit before. You know, how do we understand or identify ignorance, avidya, marigba, okay, in this context? And uh, to cut to the chase, if you will, marigba is a trodoba, means superimposition. Okay? Ignorance in this context is a superimposition. Uh, and so in terms of that superimposition, we can talk about uh, two types of uh, superimposition, if you will. Okay? And superimposition of intrinsic self uh, upon a person, if you will, and superimposition of intrinsic self on phenomena. And uh, so that's why uh, we can talk about uh, two types of uh, selves, usually we talk about self of a person and self of phenomena. Okay? And both superimpositions are ignorance or avidya. Okay? And what kind of ignorance, it, what, it is a deluded ignorance, in other words, right? Uh, so that's what we talked about. And um, so in terms of superimposition, as I mentioned before, that we can superimpose something uh, that is not there, something that doesn't exist, but we you know, concoct it and think that it exists. That's one kind of superimposition. Another kind of superimposition is something does exist, but we negate its existence. So that's another, you know, if you will, fabrication, if you will. Another term we could use for superimposition, fabrication. And um, so in this particular case, uh, the superimposition, uh, whether it is uh, uh, with regard to the to persons or phenomena, is that intrinsic self. You know, we fabricate that there is such thing as intrinsic self that exists in and of itself or objectively, and that kind of uh, notion of self is, uh, uh, you know, imputed onto two different types of basis. One is a person, and other is phenomena. Now, as you may know, that in general, everything that exists is called dharma, phenomena. Okay, in this case, well, you know, a person is a phenomenon, and the phenomenon is phenomenon, in other words, right? But how do we differentiate between these two uh, bases, if you will? Of course, a person, in this case, refers to, uh, if you will, any kind of a being, right? Humans are, you know, we call persons, or other forms of beings are, in this particular case, we call person, okay? When we take a person as the basis upon which we superimpose intrinsic self, that is called the self of a person. Okay, that's one fabrication. Now everything else, such as we call eyes, ears, nose, whatever, you know, there can be zillions of examples, these are called phenomena. So when we superimpose intrinsic self onto these phenomena, that's called the self of phenomena. So that's how, in terms of the basis, there is a difference between person and phenomena. But in terms of what that intrinsic self is that we fabricate or superimpose, there is no difference, okay? Uh, you know, intrinsic self that we uh, impute onto a person or intrinsic self that we impute onto a phenomena, it's exactly the same thing. So there's no difference, okay? The difference is only from the point of view of the basis upon which it is uh, established, okay? So that's important, uh, I think we should remember. And uh, uh, another term that we I mean, encountered uh, last time is we called uh, the transitory view or the view of transitory collection. The Tibetan term is called jigta, okay? Uh, so how do we understand that? What is transitory view or the view of transitory collection? That's a literal translation. The view of the transitory collection is understood as, uh, you know, this superimposition of intrinsic self uh, onto a per, on, on I and mind, something related to our, uh, conjoined with our consciousnesses, right? I is conjoined with our consciousness, so is the mind. Everything, my, 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 so that's related to us. So the superimposition of intrinsic self on I and mind is, in other words, regarded as a transitory view or the view of transitory collection, for lack of a better word in English. Or maybe that is a nice word, I don't know. Uh, and, um, uh, but the thing to remember here is that is also a superimposition, but every kind of superimposition does not necessarily have to be intrinsic, you know, uh, self. 
just all other kinds of superimposition. Uh, intrinsic style that we concoct and fabricate is a superimposition, but every instance of a superimposition, you know, is not necessarily that intrinsic self. Are you with me? The relationship you're talking about, okay? The relationship is intrinsic self that we superimpose onto the persons and phenomena is a superimposition, but there are other kinds of superimpositions that may not necessarily be, you know, infinity existence self or intrinsic self, if you will. Um, no, no. Oh,那天你看你拉新学了吧？新学的讲的那个看啥个讲的？你看这，你看这啥？啊，马里个，喏，这几个。那天是真的吧？马里个，马里个，新学的，马里个，新学的，新学的，新学的，新学的，新学的
which is basically superimposition of intrinsic self onto per I and mine, that is a particular case of ignorance. Okay? So there is no contradiction in those statements when we say that either the transitory view is the root of samsara or the ignorance is the root of samsara. When we really look closely uh, into this thing, the manner in which uh, these states of mind to grasp at how they see phenomena to exist exactly the same thing. You know, whether it's the transitory view or the ignorance, the way in which we perceive phenomena to exist is in and of themselves from their own side. Okay? So therefore, it is okay to say that ignorance is the root of samsara or the transitory view is uh, the root of samsara. But another thing is that ignorance is also the source of all other afflictive emotions. Why? In the Buddhist uh, literature, we have this elaborate uh, classification of uh, afflictive emotions. You know, sometimes we talk about the six root afflictive emotions or six root delusions, right? And uh, which includes uh, you know, attachment and the hatred and uh, then the you know, distorted view and so on. Ignorance, again, the source of all these other delusions. Because of that basic ignorance, when we look at uh, attractive objects, then we, you know, uh, develop attachment to those objects. You know, we get obsessively attached to that which we see as pleasant and attractive. Due to ignorance, when we see repulsive objects or unattractive objects, now we dislike them, we hate them, you know, because, you know, something's wrong with them. So this is how ignorance really is also the source of all other afflictions that arise uh, uh, in our uh, mind. No, no, no. 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 Uh any <laughs> uh, then the bottom paragraph on page 208, uh, we find uh, uh, a quote from uh, Ari Nagarjuna's uh, Precious Garland or Ratan Avali, okay, uh, and which reads, as long as you conceive of the aggregates, you will conceive of them as I, okay, unquote. 
And uh, in the actual text, as Kinsu beautifully quoted from his memory, it is a four, it is a stanza, so four line stanza, you know. And what comes after that is, uh, so, so long as we have those, uh, you know, graspings, then all other delusions will arise in our mind, and then we indulge in all positive negative activity, actions, and that's how we go round and round in samsara forever, okay. That's a beautiful quote there, actually. So anyway, so the explanation given on this is uh, uh, each of us has these two types of uh, grasping, if you will. Grasping at um, uh, the self of phenomena and grasping at the self of person. Yeah. Of these two things, it's according to the explanation given here, grasping at the self of, of phenomena, you know, it uh, be almost becomes a cause that gives rise to the grasping at the self of a person. So there is a cause and effect relationship between these two types of grasping. Okay? Because of grasping at self of phenomena, in this particular case, aggregates, we conceive of our aggregates as existing objectively from their side, in and of themselves. Okay? And that kind of grasping gives rise to grasping at I or the self. Now the I or the self exists in and of itself as well. Okay? And although both, both types of grasping are ignorance, if you will, you know, in, a, in other words, two individual cases of ignorance, but there is a cause and effect relationship uh, between, uh, between the two. And uh, so due to these two types of graspings, other types of delusions that I mentioned earlier, attachment, jealousy, anger, you know, you just name it, they all pop up, okay? And under their influence, so we engage in comic actions, and mostly negative, but we also could do positive actions under the influence of delusions. And due to these karmic actions, uh, then, you know, we just, you know, come back to samsara, you know, over and again. So therefore, the samsara becomes our permanent address, you know. Okay, yeah. Mm. That on the team, uh, <laughs> give up, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, so at the bottom of page 208, it basically establishes the same point that we may find individual cases of ignorance, such as uh, ignorance pertaining to the self of a person or ignorance pertaining to the self of phenomena. Yeah. Uh, but we could you know, still make a statement that ignorance is the root of samsara, or one of those individual cases of ignorance is the root of samsara. There should not be any contradictions, because they all <laughs> are just one of the same thing, just, you know, different uh, sides of the same, <laughs> as you would the same coin, you know, knowledge. <laughs> Nimunamcha <laughs> Uh, 
Tin the punk cows, that in the Lubon Tawat, that was on the Suvi in a season there. Lubon Tawat, Ome Shumi, Jeba Tunzuk, Yakuk, Hamagovina, and a Lumpy in your mug, Namcha. Tomo mind in your mug, Namcha, they came to Javanda with the same, Java the punk to be a your marriage in Sungu River. So we are on top of page two or nine, uh, where it reads If you do not understand, this way of explaining what the master Chandakirti intended, then it's very difficult to dispel the false impression that he contradicted himself by explaining the root of cyclic existence in two different ways, unquote. Yeah, and bless you. Uh, uh, um, so the bottom line, to summarize the point here is, you know, as I mentioned this before also, that the great Indian master Chandrakirti, we call Dawatakba, in his Madhimik avatar or supplement to the middle way, really explains clearly, you know, the, the system of delusions. Yeah, and we just consider as in some way a unique perspective of Chandrakirti on a uh, delusional system, a system of delusions, maybe not delusional system. Um, and uh, uh, so where he really differentiates between the transitory view or the view of transitory collection, jigta, and the marigba or ignorance or avitya. Okay? And so if we understand all this kind of a, uh, minutiae details of what ignorance could be, then we understand there is no contradiction in those statements. But if you're clueless about what the Chandrakirti has said, of course, then we will be clueless. And we get, you know, confused, you know, but, but then we think like, why are these saying sometimes there's an ignorance of the root of some other, other times there's a the view of transitory collection, some other root of, and then we get confused, you know, we don't know how could there be a multiple root causes of samsara. Well, there isn't a, there aren't multiple causes of root, some, root causes of samsara, there is, you know, just one, if you will, uh, basically. Uh, so that's the, uh, you know, main point uh, uh, made on top of page 209. Nonsense. <laughs> Rebecca, Tang Sarisanta, <laughs> Yanda 
So we're on to, um, top of page uh, 209. Uh, we were just said um, was this, that uh, Chandrakirti has presented, if you will, unique perspective to understand afflictive emotions and delusions in his supplement to the middle way, yeah, where he makes a distinction between the transitory view and ignorance and other forms of delusions. Yeah. Now that unique perspective of Chandrakirti on understanding delusions is not exclusive <coughs> to Chandrakirti. Yeah. It has also been asserted by other great Indian masters, uh, particularly Arya Nagarjuna. Yeah. So sometimes in the Buddhist literatures, you know, we talk about uh, you know, Arya Nagarjuna and his spiritual son, means there's only two, yeah, which usually refers to Arya Nagarjuna and Arya Deva. Nagarjuna and why there's two. Sometimes we might say, well, uh, the, the circle of five teacher and disciples, so Arya Nagarjuna, so the five has to be uh, Arya Deva, you know, has written many works, particularly the 400 stanzas or Chetuk Shedak, right, where he does his presentation. And uh, uh, then uh, the Chandrakirti has many works, Supplement the Middle Way, which we just quoted. And then there's the Buddha Palita, well, Buddha Palita has work called Buddha Palita. Yes, yeah, so he got uh, his presentation in that. And then the great uh, Bodhisattva Mahasattva Shantideva has a number of works, particularly uh, Bodhisattva's way of life, right? Bodhisattva Char Avatars in chapter nine, where he really presents in detail, right? Uh, you know, on the view of selflessness, yeah? And all of the, these masters, right? They agree with that unique understanding of presentation of uh, delusions. And Chandrakirti represents that whole cluster of uh, masters, right, on top of which is Arya uh, Nagarjuna. And uh, so Nagarjuna has composed uh, what we call the six collected works of Arya Nagarjuna, you know. And among them, well, in other works also, he talks about emptiness as well, the precious garland we quoted earlier than other works. But the one that is quoted now is called 70 Stanzas on Emptiness, okay, Tong Yu Tunju in Tibetan. That's right on top of page uh, 209. So we have two stanzas quoted. Stanza number one, read. The teacher said that ignorance is the conception that in reality, things are produced from causes and conditions. From this, the 12 factors arise, unquote. Now I'm not really sure about that translation, but anyway, I'm going to zip my mouth and just translate that commentary given on that because that is a little confusing to me as well. So the explanation given on that is, the teacher refers to our historical teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha, the founder of Buddhism, right? And he identified ignorance as a conceptual state of mind, right? Uh, and uh, so that where it says in reality, what it really has to be understood as intrinsic reality, yeah? So Shakyamuni Buddha said, that you know, we fabricate this intrinsic reality and uh, uh, how should I say, impute it onto self and phenomena, and then we conceive self and phenomena to exist in that way, just that we made it up, you know, but we don't say that we made it up, you know, but that's what it is. And uh, so even though in reality, things are produced from causes and conditions, but due to our superimposition, that we do not see things arising from causes and conditions, but we feel they have a fixed entity and they exist in of itself, okay? So that's our contribution there. So because of that superimposition, we see the ignorance we talked about earlier, then this all other 12 factors arise, actually the 11 factors arise. Remember the other term we use often is uh, the a chain of 12 interdependent links or 12 links of interdependent origination. And what tops this link is ignorance, right, avidya. And because of ignorance, particularly that superimposition of intrinsic self, we create karmic action. The second link is the karmic action, karmic formation. And once we create karma, well, karma needs to be deposited in this imprint somewhere. Then there is the consciousness, okay? And then the rest of the things. And uh, Kinsanabha says he doesn't need to explain that here because later on when we go back to 
volume number one and maybe two, in the context of the intermediate level practitioners, we will talk about you know, how do we come into samsara and maybe how can we get out as well. Not maybe, we, we, we can get out of samsara. So in the first stanza, uh, Arya Nagarjuna really gives us you know, that whole explanation about how due to these 12 links of interdependent origination, ignorance, karmic formation, consciousness, and so forth, that we enter into samsara. And then we make samsara our permanent address, isn't it? In the second stanza, he, calls, he gives us how to exit samsara, you know, get out of samsara, if we, you will. And the second stanza reads, through seeing reality, you know that things are empty. Ignorance does not arise. This is the cessation of ignorance. Because of this, the 12 factors cease. So that's a completely different ha, meaning here, right? So if we, you know, how should I say, understand how everything actually exists, not how everything appears to exist, but how do everything really exist, what we call the final modes of the existence of phenomena, or the ultimate nature of phenomena, or the ultimate reality. We throw all those terms, right? Basically, we're talking about the same thing. Then we develop the wisdom that sees the ultimate nature of phenomena as it is, the selflessness. And that wisdom is the direct antidote to our grasping at uh, intrinsic self, right? Because that wisdom and this grasping, you know, they don't go well together. They are the direct antithesis of each other. If the ignorance exists, the wisdom couldn't come in. If the wisdom exists, ignorance must go because they can't be friends, you know? They're the direct antithesis of each other. So when we cultivate that wisdom, realizing the ultimate nature phenomena, then ignorance must go, you know? There, is, there isn't a space for the ignorance to stay in our mind. So when that happens, it says, we understand how things are empty, empty of intrinsic reality or nature, Ignorance does not arise. So of the 12 dependent links of origination, avidya or ignorance ceases to exist. When ignorance ceases to exist, karmic formation ceases to exist. When karmic formation ceases to exist, then it cannot deposit imprints onto uh, the consciousness and so on. So this is what we call the reverse order of 12 links of interdependent origination. We follow the sequential order of 12 dependent links. This is how we come into samsara. We stay in samsara. But if we follow the reverse order, right, of the 12 dependent links, then we can get out of samsara. Right? That is our way to uh, liberation. Uh, and um, uh, as, uh, you know, Kinsel explained, Maybe we can use different types of metaphors to capture what ignorance is. Maybe ignorance is the king. Karmic formation is the minister or the servant, right? And if king couldn't exist, right, ignorance is gone, well, the servants have no job to do. They're jobless, you know? So then what can they do? I mean, uh, there's nothing they can do about it. So like that, if the ignorance is knocked out or eliminated, but rather good word, then karmic formation stops and then everything all ourselves. So when you look in the 12 links of interdependent origination, the preceding links are the causes which gives rise to the subsequent links. When we can break this chain through the reverse order of the 12 dependent links, then we can really say goodbye to samsara. And you know, uh, we can say, oh, happy day. No, he didn't say that, but you know. <laughs> I want to throw that out, so yeah, that's the good news. News. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Sashi 
Sari Nagarjuna has, uh, you know, also said the same thing in some other works as well. Uh, for example, in his uh, uh, fundamental treatise or the Mule Madhimika, uh, we call the root wisdom treatise sometimes, you know, in the chapter 26, again, Ari Nagarjuna has uh, said similar things uh, that he has already stated in the 70 stanzas on emptiness. Uh, the first stanza reads, when ignorance is stopped, compositional activity will not arise at all. That which stops ignorance is knowing and meditating on reality, unquote. Okay, so the explanation given on this, as you can see, the same uh, message here, that if we can put a stop to ignorance, if we can cease the ignorance, then the compositional activity, meaning karmic formation, will stop as well. It won't arise. Then the question arises, how can we stop the ignorance? Yes, I will. You know, I want to put a stop to ignorance. But how can I do that? Well, the answer is in the next two lines, which says, is knowing and meditating on reality. So we have to uh, you know, understand how we impose certain kind of reality onto phenomena and things. It is not there. It is a figment of our imagination. You know, we fabricate it completely. So we have to understand the working of our mind and how we do the superimposition. So once we know it, it's just like we have found the, you know, the, what you call, uh, the key to open the door. And then knowing itself is not enough because we need to cultivate that understanding of the wisdom through meditation. Okay? And as Kinsu has explained very well, our first challenge is to be able to understand what kind of you know, reality that we superimpose onto things, okay? And we often use the word intrinsic reality onto things, okay? And uh, then not only that we superimpose such reality onto things, but now we believe wholeheartedly in that reality and we grasp at it. So that intrinsic reality becomes what we call the referent object, shenyul in Tibetan, the referent focus of our grasping, okay? So we have to understand that referent object we created, it really doesn't exist. You know, it's a superimposition. Something that doesn't exist, we said it exists. You know, that's how we got crazy, you know. He didn't say that, but you know, we are crazy. Uh, uh, so we know that. Then how do we learn that is through education, through listening to teaching. Tibetans call teba, right? Listening to teaching, listen to the teaching, right? The primary goal of listening to the teaching is to develop the correct knowledge and understanding. That's what comes with the study, education, right? But once we have the knowledge, it's not enough. We need to do the contemplation. We call samba. We have to contemplate 
the ascertained meaning so that we analyze it more deeply. We are to understand access to reality, you know, more deeply. It deepens our understanding. Now, so once we have deep understanding of reality, that's not enough it also. That's great. Yeah. Now we need to cultivate right, the insight or the wisdom, realizing that, and enhance that wisdom. And that has to come through meditation practice. Yeah. As we know, first we develop the intellectual understanding of reality. Well, then we have to do meditation to peel off all that you know, intellectualization, you know, all, the, all those things through meditation so that we will have uh, you know, direct experience of uh, what that reality is. So through that method, study, contemplation, meditation, listening, contemplation, meditation of that, that we will be able to get rid of the ignorance. Yeah? We can stop the ignorance, and thereby we can stop the rest of the links in the in a chain. Oh, Tetra Sangme Tinny, Rangi Kuvesawa <laughs> Uh, we are in the middle of page 209. Uh, the second stanza quoted from chapter 26 of the Fundamental Treatise or the Mule Madhimiga. 
by Arunagarjuna, and the stanza reads, by stopping this and that earlier factor of dependent arising, this and that later factor will not arise. In this way, you thoroughly stop the whole mass of suffering, unquote. So the point here is uh, if we can uh, eliminate or stop ignorance, then we look within the framework of 12 dependent originations. When you stop the preceding uh, causes, then the subsequent effects will naturally stop. Okay? Because the way we can get rid of any suffering is by way, by way of getting rid of its causes. When the causes are not there abandoned, then they cannot be suffering anymore. Okay? The whole mass of suffering that we talk about is uh, um, related to our uh, psychosomatic aggregates, our physical and mental aggregates, right? And that we know very well, you know, what kind of problems we go through life, you know? The suffering of birth, the suffering of sickness, the suffering of aging, the suffering of death, and then there are terms of other sufferings, you know? And why all this suffering we don't want befalls us is because, you know, we have not interrupted that cycle of 12 dependent originations. You know, we kept it intact, so therefore, the cycle perpetuates, and there's a perpetuation of the suffering, and you know, that goes on. So if we want to put an end to the suffering, we have to put an end to its cause, and it really starts with the basic ignorance. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, um, as Kim Maji has uh, you know, um, explained, that uh, there is every possibility. The good news is that we can stop suffering. It may seem like you know, it's you know, very difficult to do. Yes, it is. Nobody says it's easy. Uh, but if we choose to, we can stop suffering for good because there is powerful direct antidote to our ignorance. Yeah? And if we apply the antidote, we cultivate the antidote, you know, it is nothing but in the law of nature that we should be able to get rid of ignorance and therefore we can stop suffering for good. Okay, so that is the uh, crux of the message uh, in this. And then of course, Kendra you know, um, because he's trained in his monastic debate, so he put the whole thing in a basic logistic form, you know, how it all works out. And uh, so basically, in a monastic logistic debate order, we can see that these contaminated aggregates, because these ag aggregates are the results of Delusions and contaminated chemical reactions, right? So these contaminated aggregates, for instance, we can severe their continuum. We can stop the continuity of these aggregates. Why? Because they exist these powerful direct antidotes to counteract, you know, uh, the root cause of these uh, aggregates. So therefore, there is a possibility. So that's how in the monastic debate they debate about these things. Uh, and, uh, you know, based on the many other works, particularly Brahmana Vartika or the valid cognition text, you know, where they use all these valid cognitions and, you know, syllogisms to establish these uh, uh, realities. Oh, sorry. And then something that left uh, is, as I'm looking at, you know, the lines jumped at me. But, oh, you didn't finish. Uh, uh, then following those stanzas, uh, the line says, these and other passages just cited are in agreement and fit together very well with a line in Nagarjuna's precious garland, as long as you conceive of the aggregate, etc. So basically, we have quoted three different uh, sources of Nagarjuna. We quoted the 70 stanzas on emptiness. We quoted the fundamental wisdom treatise of Nagarjuna. We quoted the precious garland of Nagarjuna. But all of them are in sync together. They unanimously agree with the thing that if we can stop that conception of intrinsic reality, then can, we can stop the rest of all the things in the chain. Okay, so that is the take home message. No, no. What I did, I said, 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 I え、だってね、パクワセシバニーソンがしては、ロボンパクワさ。コンボルディティペジチュパクワさ。ヨーロバタ。ロダパクワセカンデスンビヨラセナ。だってシタタンサリケティ、トンダチャヒュケアチャム
uh, towards the bottom of page uh, 209, now we have uh, a work which we have seen quoted before from Arya, Arya Deva. Remember I said sometimes we talk about uh, five masters and disciples, Arya Nagarjuna, right? So we have seen the Nagarjuna's work quoted, we have seen the Chandragiri work quoted, and now we are seeing Arya Deva's work. Arya Deva is usually uh, referred to as the chief disciple, the main disciple of Arya Nagarjuna. Okay? And uh, so here Arya Deva uh, states, just as the tactile sensory faculty pervades the body, also the root of sickle existence is the consciousness, da, 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 da. So Kinsa uh, Rumbaji has quoted uh, the whole stanza from his memory, and he explained this before also, which is uh, just like we have this, you know, uh, you know, sensory faculties, but the tactile faculty, it pervades the whole other sensory faculties. Just like that, ignorance pervades all other delusions, okay? Now, if we destroy <laughs> the ignorance, if you destroy ignorance, then we will also be able to destroy the rest of the delusions as well, okay? Uh, and um, so that comes from the work of uh, Arya Deva, and Arya Deva, of course, you know, he you know, wholeheartedly believes in and supports his master's works, Arya Nagarjuna's works. No. No, yeah, Tra so Kinsanamaji thought, you know, we better stop there and yield the floor to you for your questions or clarifications we need to do, observations you want to make, because the next batch is then it opens whole other sections, you know, so we may not finish <laughs> uh, before lunch. Uh, and of course, he's really happy to receive your questions, and he said he will do his best to answer your questions. If he doesn't have the answers, he has to be honest to tell you, I don't know, yeah, because he, he can't uh, fake the answer and give it to you. <laughs> that, those are his words, you know, not me. <laughs> Hi, um, so I have a kind of quick question. We don't even want positive karmic karmic um, things to Im go on to our consciousness, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds to me like Buddhists don't um, argue and too much and they don't, um, they don't debate um, <coughs> what they think um, their position is because that gets to an argument. Oh, can you say so, one so more two time? Things, yeah. Listen one more time. Okay, two things. We don't even want positive karmic um, things to deposit on our consciousness, so therefore we don't we want. That's what yeah, that's what because because if it, if karma deposits on your consciousness, then you're stuck in car you're stuck oh, in some okay, okay, okay. So so okay, therefore okay. we dedicate yes, everything. Yes. Okay, okay. And the second is, I don't think Buddhists argue or debate their point too much, do they? Uh, they do argue argue or debate their point too much. The second part, I still am not sure. Yeah, they don't argue too much, do they? I agree about what? Well, I'm about anything because you have a position, you want to <laughs> argue it, uh, you know, and oh so therefore. Oh no, Buddhists <laughs> are. You'll, you'll talk yourself out of okay. it. <laughs> no, you need to visit the monasteries, you know, for <laughs> hours and hours. By midnight, they're not done arguing with each other. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so I'll get your first is really a question. I got it. I just, this seems to be important. Yeah. <laughs> Tiwa 
Because I want to make sure that he understood what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, I'm yelling because he told me he has a little hard with hearing, so I need to yell. I got the permission ahead of the time, so I'm yelling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sigurva, <laughs> No. I think Kinsu Rumi's answer is that, you know, when we look at uh, the 12 links of independent origination, starting with ignorance, how that could influence all other delusions, and under the influence of delusions, we could create positive actions, karma, which also deposit their imprints on our consciousness, and then we come back to samsara, of course, better part of the samsara, as we said before, right? Samsara has a better part of the samsara and the other side of the samsara. But this is a one presentation. We call it, uh, uh, you know, looking at things from the afflictive side of the phenomena. The, t- the Tibetan term is called, you know, kuni uh, right? nyomon The perspective is looking from the afflictive side of the phenomena. Now we can look at the things from the liberated side of the phenomena, okay? So the way we have been doing things is, yes, you know, even the good karmas we create seems to be influenced by grasping an intrinsic reality and things, and these good karmas are depositing their imprints on our consciousness, and then they ripen, and we are in the bitter part of samsara, we are still in samsara anyway, right? That is our story, you know? And uh, so, the, but there's other way of creating good karmas that can deposit imprints on our consciousness, and we can get out of samsara. So that's another side, the liberated side of the phenomenon. So I hope that answers your question. And the second one, probably I did, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you use the mic so that, uh, yeah. 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 
ジャザンニリニリレガチェコウベソンザチジョジギネダンダンソバジギディシュオルテコデカラヤダンガズガンゲマンプチゴレスロワエナコランチャシャウェネチンジョバレドワチンジョバチンジョバインデュカラヤコ
yeah, I was uh, you know, making sure that I understood what Ken Sadrumza was saying, and I was also asking, can he broaden his prospect a little bit, you know, so that uh, we get a better sense of what it is. And uh, I mean, first he wants to really express his appreciation um, to you that even the thinking about, you know, how to integrate uh, the Dharma into your professional work, you know, as difficult as it is, there are so many constraints as you really very well explicate it, you know because your work ethic says you must do everything to defend your client, but in the process of defending that, maybe you are harming somebody else, you know, because not every time that the truth is on your side, you know, matter. Uh, but the fact that you have really thought about it seriously, he said, you know, that is really kudos to you. I mean, you're really seriously thinking about integrating that, you know. And in one sense, so we can look at things for different, but in one sense, yes, there are situations where perhaps the mundane activities and the Dharma activities really don't w go well together at all, you know, and there's no way to reconcile the two differences, you know. But there are ways in some way we could, you know. So one way, for example, the example Kim Sun was used to say, what he has been talking about is all from Dharma point of view, you know, how this has been done. But from a mundane point of view, let's say, our country can call upon us to go and fight and defend our country, right? We can say, no, I'm a Dharma person, I'm not going to, you know, do this, right? Then from their point of view, they think that you're not doing your citizen's job, you really don't love your country. I mean, how can it be, you know? Because it makes perfect sense for them <laughs> that we should be defending our country. So when we look at these two perspectives, it's rather hard to reconcile what is not, you know? But at other times, from another perspective, as we often say, when it comes to Dharma, a lot of them is to do with our mindset and motivation. You know, as it is very well stated in the mind training text, you know, Lojong, Togdani la Chawani. There are two actions important, one at the beginning and one at the end. Well, this is very vague. The <laughs> explanation given on that is, one at the beginning is really try to, uh, you know, uh, correct our motivation. Have the right kind of motivation as we engage in any kind of action. You know, positive motivation, if you will. And the one at the end is, when we have done it, we should properly dedicate whatever that positive action and merit, right, for the greater good. Yeah. So sometimes from that point of view, we may be able to integrate right, Dharma into our work, that right? whatever we do, you know, we kind of really think positively and cultivate positive motivation, you know, and then do within our given situations, constraints, as best that we can, so that, you know, we also integrate the Dharma. So it is a very challenging and complicated thing, as you said, you know, sometimes they never will go together because Dharma is Dharma and mundane is mundane, you know, but other times we will be able to negotiate the differences, okay, that's what Kenzo Mungo said. That's what you are sure, right? Oh. That's what I'm saying, that did it, the Quran chamber, the Inam and the Samson, and the Kenzo, Ken, Tamba, your Rabaki, Shala, Tamba, Kim, and the Sungisa, that Quran, Lavan, the Tony, Rabbit, they saw two in any Ramzu of Sims who were soon is a Rawa, Tony, huh? Did they rather soon, and this one was done as a churgy, Sensa Simiajor, La, Sensa, uh, Taka Churgy, Yachilas, and the Andrean, and the Nama, Yawa, Drogo, Massage, your Rawa, did they have seen two be in? And it's, yeah, there's cars of all hulu, which is a sitting with each other. On the net cut nine years, or do you call it? And I can't say to Kongsu Karayanasa. Do you call it? That's in a sudden with a simple edge. Now, can they seem good to see good your order? So, tea, I wish you much, and it's such a salty and it's up to Marie Lesha. No, tea, I wish you that. It's just a simple. Can I have the tea, sir? Key, Kalitua, I feel like you would eat that tea. Yamji, you took my own tea down. ไอ้เจ้าเนี่ยมีชีวิตชั่วละสุบะทอสินขะจินซงอีบาเนาะมีชีวิตชั่วละสุบะทอสเสียเดคาริสเกเนาะจอลอมสุบะทอมเนงย
Now, this is uh, in response to your second uh, you know, um, question or observation. Um, and what Ken Sarnabas thinks is, you know, some, um, of course, it would be great if, uh, even if we couldn't have uh, really, I should say, even um, the deep understanding of emptiness, but if we can reach a stage where it's more like a stable, so that thereafter we don't have to worry too much, you know, we will keep getting better rather than, you know, we, the metaphor we use is like a fortress, you know, in a war situation, if you have a, this strong fortress, right, well, then you're very well protected. That's why he was chuckling over that. In the same way, if you can create a spiritual fortress for some kind, then, you know, we could protect ourselves from many negativities and other things. You know, that doesn't mean that we're enlightened or something, you know, but still we are in a very good situation. And so uh, relating to that, uh, you know, one expression that we have seen before and which Kinsaru uh, you know, said he explained in one way, uh, but there was other ways is, I think the word was something called uh, patience or tolerance in regard to uh, what non-production or something like that. Yeah, I mean, that word probably means nothing to me. But the explanation of that is, uh, in that context, it's explained that uh, arahats of the hearers and solitary realizers, charvakas and pratika buddha arahats, those who are completely free from samsara, as well as bodhisattvas on the eight spiritual ground, because there are ten spiritual grounds, eight spiritual grounds, they are completely free of afflictive emotions or delusions. So they have developed the highest level of confidence with regard to the delusions that they will never experience it again. So they will never, you know, fall into any other situation due to delusions. Mm -hmm. right? So that's one way of understanding patience or tolerance with regard to non-production. Yeah, that's how he explained the last time. But another <coughs> way to understand <coughs> that is, um, uh, as we often talk about, um, on the path of preparation, there are four stages or levels. There is uh, what we call uh, uh, the heat level of path of preparation, okay? And then there is uh, the peak level of path of preparation, uh, and then there is the patience level of path of preparation, and then there is the super mundane level of path of preparation, the four stages. So if we can get to the third level of the path of preparation called patience, so about tolerance, right? That is also sometimes called the patience with regard to non-production in the sense that hereafter you develop certain ability and confidence that you will never be reborn in the bad migrations. So it is like spiritual fortress, isn't it? You build it up here, okay? So that is the way, as I sometimes we, instead of really thinking too you know, big, if we can develop at certain level, then we will be able to stop a lot of negativities. You know? So that's what he wants to uh, I mean explain to you. Can you send the mic to Vladimir? Yeah. Question about this com uh, 
quote from Precious Garland. Um, mm -hmm. As long as you conceive of the aggregates, you will conceive of them as, as I. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, uh, we hear that uh, first you conceive of I, and then you conceive of, of mine, mine oh, referring yeah. to the <laughs> aggregates. <laughs> now, this, this particular conception of the aggregates, does it mean just uh, conceiving of body? Let's say mm -hmm. you uh, the, the sensory con eye, eye consciousness perceives form mm -hmm. and then conceives body, mm -hmm. is it, uh, and then on the base of that, the mm -hmm. conception of I arises, and mm -hmm. only on the base of that, the conception of my body arises. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is this the mm -hmm. uh, what the sequence of? Uh, okay, say that one uh, more time right. so that I okay. make sure I understand. Uh, is it the case where, uh, let's say, the visual consciousness perceives uh, form, uh, color, the color of right, the body, right. conceives yeah. the form of a body, right. and so th th there is right. a conception at this moment, uh -huh. and a and the and the conception body. Uh -huh. And then on the basis of this conception, body, we mm -hmm. conceive of I. Right. Is this what it what it refers to? And oh. then on the basis of this conception of I, we conceive the body, uh, back my to the body. body, as mine. Okay, okay. Mine. Okay. I is this Allah, what I can show you the Dirisha. Tanda Rinjenta wa ni shumuji taang nama yin ba. La yi. Rinjenta wa ni shumuji taang nama yin ba. 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 Chiyo-ge-tang-zin-jie-di-ju-chan-na-kang-sa-tang-zin-ki-ru-sum-bo-yin-ba. Anjing dia orang ini nyesu guslam ni lewa, ngaji bersih. Oh di kita sih kalau lewa, tanda dia sih tanda lewa. Jadi tanpa ngaji dah lepas ni, jadi tak dia sih kalau lepas lembu kalau lewa dia. Hari ni dia. Di mana lewa dah? Sama tu. Hari ni dia. Kalau dia di dia lewa. Hari ni dia. Ya. Tanpa ngaji ngaji tua, tanpa ngaji kalau tanpa kalau ini tak je. Tanpa ngaji dah lepas ni, jadi sih ni mana ni tu ni mana sih tu mari ni mungkin ngaji lewa. Ngaji lewa tu kalau cayang dia lah. Mungkin ngaji lewa, nang ngaji lewa. Yeah,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin,ujin
penang sul mi begi tony yorwa, di komisi na yaksa yorwa, kan kusu san da rakwa san da kusu samlo kwa yorwa, a che che kan da dagi da kura san da yorwa, kan kura rangi sul mi, di le penang ngai <hesitation> kasa ta <hesitation> tang zin ti yorwa, di le zin ngai yorwa ti yorwa ngi yorwa ti yorwa, di ne yorwa kala tony yorwa kumbe rimba che penang tang kura sul tony yorwa komisi na yorwa, be la che ani tony yorwa samba komna yaksa mi yorwa, dan nam yorwa di sun yorwa kara kang sag <hesitation> kasa. Tambe ngel kom en chok dam shuk kom susumar wadi ta kudi le jawata gor wanya hari di na ati di lol kari cha di tunda che che adi che chos na <hesitation> ke 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 Lui char cha a che ne, tong bi shi chi chik cha ne, <hesitation> nyel le tong bo cheng jong ngang di kong bo re cheng ke luk che yor, tel yi cha cha ma ke ri, kong che sona ka ke che ne nyi ba me song yor e, ka sa ke ta mi <hesitation> ta che ke ta mi nyi ba ke ke nyi ba ke yor ma ri ra ngi <hesitation> che che la lo ka cho ma cho ke cha ne <hesitation> kong bi ri ma to che la e, nyi ma chi ta che yi cha cha ma ka ke shi ba nda ma ka yor e, ka che ka sa ke me nyi la ke kong bo re, ke me che ka che che ke ta mi. ตอบเลยเนี่ยล่ะเนาะจึงก็จะจะตําบ่เมตเตเตเมยิมเตปานะเมลอนาเตจีสิกิดอาสเนาะเมลอนาดิจีสิกิดซุมเนติเตเมต
Amarabaza he who has a prostration to Guru protect the sublime Manjushri. Some of you have it, some of you don't, so that's how we get conflicted. He who has the intuitive wisdom that disperses the clouds of the two obscuration, like the sun shedding a glorious light that's utterly pure. He who understands all meanings, whatsoever, or perfect realization, from whose heart emerges the lotus holding the books of the perfection of wisdom. Those who live in samsara are the prisoners of ignorance, afflicted by the darkness of suffering, looking after all the sentient beings with a compassion, like a mother looking after an only child. You have a melodious voice of 60 tones. Roaring like a dragon, you wake people from the sleep of conflicting emotions, freeing one from the iron shackles of karma, dispelling the darkness of their ignorance, thus you wield the sword which cuts down the shoots of suffering, primordially pure, having reached the 10 bodhisattva level, the perfect body of high quality, the former son of the Buddhas, adorned with 112 ornaments, major and minor physical perfections of a Buddha, I bow down to you, Manjushri, please dispel the darkness of my mind. Om Arabhaza Nadi, I beseech you with the loving kindness of your omniscient light rays to completely dispel the dark ignorance of my mind, thus giving me the intellectual courage and intelligence to understand the teachings of the Buddha, their elucidating treatises and commentaries. O peerless saver and supreme teacher, Shuddhodana son, O the 17 masters and adepts, Nagarjuna and Asanga and so on, O Dibhankar as well as sovereign father Tsongkhapa, gloriously appear here to today to grant auspiciousness. On the great path leading to the heart of enlightenment, you have traversed by means of the perfect threefold discipline and have enhanced ever higher the realizations of the enlightened qualities. O glorious Guru, we offer our supplications at your feet. Pray written gloriously to propagate the teaching of love song by tying well the sash of monastic disciplinary precepts and generating the altruistic intention to free all beings engaged in the tantric yogas of the two stages. Think of the unbearable pain of the sentient beings who are enveloped in the forces of five degenerations, and to open wide the lotus grove of the Buddha's teachings, may your reincarnation appear soon as a source of merit for us. Namo Mube Sado Juhe Tentang Tolo Vote, Namo Dibam Kara Jinsonga Wa Tongung Tufu, Tong Lam Dong Chung Tentang Tetan Bai Tai Tulme, Tantang Jalo, Tukchi, Tendang, Tentang Dajai, Tantai Sebu, Dong Yun, Tukai, Badang, Golo, Gole, Tato, Babong, Tutu, Bode, Tanchen, Tong Su, Kong Yun, Tusung, Tung Su, Postang, Bele, Soma, Tolai, Tong Su, Wente, Yabra, Dobson, Bangsu, Dachai, Dakong, Ying Min, Ting Min, Tobin, Gole, Kotan, Tubi, Bangwe, Dada, Tung Chung Hong Te Tu Bai Mek Bek Ni Tang Chung Bo Tung Ma Tung Chung Tung Khoi Ba Tham Bo Te Tu Chung Tung Bi Ba Pu Ta Do Tung Yung Mang Luk Nu Tu Dang Lai Tung Bai Ma Bai Yi Chen Ya Ba Wa Ta Tung Ma Tang Chang Nu
Sidemba, Senjo, Idamangro, Rana, 